before we get into this episode where we talk about Weapon X, I gotta give a special shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean channel member, Annette Trent. Appreciate you. Now, whenever you comment on any video, you'll have that nice, pretty, beautiful star right next to your name to let everybody know like, hey, I'm a Team Keep It Clean channel member. If you want to become one too, all you got to do is click the join button. I love y'all. Let's get into this first question that came from my guy. Jai, baby. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope all is well. Ravens picked up Andy Isabella before Deshaun Jackson, but we have yet to see him on the field or even hear anything about him. It's the weirdest thing. It's still the weirdest thing. Like, they done did flip-flops and they done played crisscross applesauce with all these different receivers, but you hear nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing about Andy Isabella. And it's, it's so weird. But anyway, he said, I think he would be a good contribution in the quick slot situation. He has speed that I've seen him in, in the past. What do you think is going on with Isabella? I don't know. I don't know. I I got no clue. Um, And yeah, I agree. Uh, in that short passing game that the Ravens have been using under Tyler Huntley, um, I, yeah, he... Yeah, in, if they use that with Lamar too, with Eddie, yeah, it, that that could help with Yak because he got speed. If they could get him the ball early, get the ball in his hands early, and even throwing some deep passes too, like, but I don't know. I really don't know. It's it's the weirdest thing, man. Like you you ain't hear heard a peep. But I think somebody showed me something. Um, like maybe a week or two ago. Well, uh, he, he was wearing the number nine in practice. I said, hold on, they didn't even get his, what, jersey number? They gave him Justin Tucker jersey? Like, whoa, hold on that, but So, I don't know. I really don't know. It is so crazy. But, because it's like the Ravens, they they use Demarcus Robinson. Uh, they use him. Um, Devin DuVernay, they, they be using him a little bit. Uh, but other than that... They don't use well Deshaun Jackson now. He's been getting like one, two catches in the game. Um, so he's been getting used, but yeah, I mean the other receivers have been pro shade. It's been uh Tylen Wallace. I know he's on IR right now. Uh even though Harbaugh said he might come back this year. Um, but they, they don't use those guys. And you got again, you got Isabella. So I mean, why not? But I, I guess the Ravens, they Know something that we don't, and I don't know. It's, it's, it's so weird, man. Like, we ain't heard a peep, man. But he also said, on another note, I truly love the way Huntley shares his passes and opens up the field. Seems as if the wide receivers have a different feel with him. A good feel, though. And I know we all see how Roman opened that Snoop playbook, and it really works. Looks productive for everyone. What are your thoughts? Well, yeah, that's that's the Ravens opening up the field a bit. They still don't have some of the same issues with the receivers uh, being in the same area sometimes. Um, but the, the the way that it opens up the field, which is a good thing, that's why we hope and we've been hoping even before Lamar got hurt that they would have the short, quick passing game involved a lot more. Um, but it allows the receivers to get their ball in their hands quicker. Uh, it allows the quarterback to get the ball out of his hands quicker. Uh, and with the short passing game, you take a bunch of short passes, short passes, short passes, that can help set you up for the long pass, for the attempt, so uh, it'll catch the defense slipping. But it is a way to get different guys involved, and it, it, it can work. It can be successful. Because um, that's like the short passing game is sort of an extension of the running game. It is, but it, it just – it helps just diversify the offense that much more. So now, um, if Snoop ends up playing in this game uh, or it ends up being Anthony Brown, now what we hope for, uh, and again, it, it's it's a lot to ask because, again, they are backup quarterbacks. But whether it's Snoop, whether it's Anthony Brown, because I don't think it's going to be Lamar Jackson that plays in this next game. But we can hope that, well, we do hope that, Along with the short passing game, and hopefully the running game continues, shout out to Ronnie Stanley being back in JK, getting strong and strong in Gus as well. Um, but along with the short passing game, we hope that they can incorporate some deep passes as well uh, and get the deep, the deep passing game going because that would help take the offense to another level. So that would be a beautiful thing to see. He said, thanks, Engraven, and like Lamar Jackson in Week 15. Hopefully not. I'm out. Go Flockers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like got to made it. How to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens. Like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team, keep it clean. You see my boy, he like.
gotta made it, gotta made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and grave it, right and grave it. Team Keep It Clean, welcome to another episode of Questions from Subs, where y'all can ask any question you want to, and we answer in a video just like this. If you want to learn how to be a part of it, check everything down below in the description. If you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, check everything down below in the description. If you ever want to send anything to the Team Keep It Clean PO Box, check everything down below in the description. Next question came from a patron, my guy Serge. He said, what's up, Engraving? See, this time I'm writing to you after a win, and it's always nice. When we can have questions after wins But anyway, uh, he said back during the offseason I had a conversation with one of my buddies from LA And they were telling me a story about a current NFL player's brother That worked with them uh, He asked that NFL's player brothers uh, How much longer they thought that player would keep playing football before they retired They said that player planned on only playing one more season before retiring That person was Deshaun Jackson's brother At that point in time, I didn't think we'd ever sign him I thought we had a solid wide receiver group coming into the season Unfortunately, that's not looking like the case. So my question to you is, knowing that it's most likely his last season playing, will you be getting a Deshaun Jackson jersey? Uh, I mean, I, I, haven't, I haven't gotten a, a jersey for myself in a, a long time. Um, yeah, it's been ages. So, I mean, probably not. I don't know. If, if Deshaun Jackson wanted to send one, I would certainly take it. But uh, pro probably not And it obviously it ain't nothing against him It's just me I just haven't gotten a jersey in, in like literally forever uh, And he said Also Now that T.Y. Hilton is signing with the Cowboys uh, Do you think our chances of signing Odell Beckham Jr. Whether for now or for the future Have gotten any better Much love from the A Surge Appreciate it man Um, I think slightly Well yeah I mean in the Bills They signed Cole Beasley So it's like two teams that he visited with already They've already signed other receivers uh, and veteran receivers at that, guys that can contribute right away. So I don't know with Odell Beckham Jr. the the pickings looking slim, man. So they I heard that the the Chiefs they still talking to him. Um, last we heard about the Ravens was last week that they were still in conversations with him. Um, and the other team was the Giants. So I mean we'll see. We just waiting, I guess. I mean I really don't think much will come out of Odell Beckham Jr. this year, but. We'll see where he ends up. Next question came from another Team Keep It Clean patron, my guy Nick Brick. He said, been a minute since I sent in a question. Yeah, since September 28th. So yeah, it's been a little minute, my friend. But anyway, he said, but I'm always watching. Appreciate that. Uh, I got one here, though. Do you think Ravens fans in the organization set players up for failure? Hear me out. Every year, many Ravens fans and EDC and team try to convince us that some fourth rounder is going to be a key contributor on the team, and we have no need for additional talent. Oh, okay, yeah, yes. If that's what you're asking, then yes, 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 yes. I agree 1,050%. Yes. Um, he said, uh, while this proves to be true for some players like Gus, he was an undrafted guy. Mark Andrews, he was a third-round pick. Um, usually that player is hit with high expectations that cannot be achieved. For example, Tyler Huntley is a great backup, and what he's been able to do is amazing. But for some reason, fans attempt to elevate his play to knock down Lamar. This is unfair to Snoop because now normal fans have to constantly mention that the, the ways that he's not Lamar. That's true. Uh, there's nothing wrong with an undrafted guy solidifying his spot as a long-term backup, getting in and floating the team for a few weeks by checking one or two reads and then taking off, limiting mistakes and getting us out there with ugly wins. If we expect more out of him, we will inevitably be disappointed because we expect the backup to be a starter because Ravens and their fans want value. But sometimes things are cheap for a reason. And sometimes you just have to go and get talented guys. I'll end it there, but... Other players who were and are unfairly put in this position are, before we get to this list, you, man, you nailed it. You nailed it, like, perfectly, because this happens so much. It happens so much. Now, as far as the with fans, yeah, the, the whole Tyler Huntley, Lamar Jackson, you nailed it perfectly. Um, but as far as Ravens, Ravens do the same thing. They will sell you, like, they'll... Do the, these these videos and stuff that are uh, propelling, I mean, propping up these fourth, fifth round picks. Like, they'll do the, the, the pressers and stuff that are propped them up and whatnot. And they will sell you on, hey, look, we got this guy. Look who we got. Oh, he's going to be amazing. You see, you see the preseason and you're like, whoa, wait a minute. So, yeah, they, they smart. They, they get you. 
And then the fans, they bite it. And the fans, like you talked about, the fans, they want the value, the value players. And, I mean, these are still NFL players, so they're obviously talented. But the fans, they start to, to, to take that in. And they're like, oh, no, hey, we don't need that top talented guy at that position. No, no, no. We got this guy at the crib already. We already got him. We don't need the guy who just been putting up all them numbers all them years, been killing it. In the, we don't need him. We got this, and we got it at the, a fraction of the cost. Look at that. But anyway, his list. He said um, some, some players that were and are unfairly put in this position are James Prochet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And because bottom line, he's a, a, what, a fifth or sixth round pick wide receiver. So the expectation should have been low from there. But the way that he was propped up by the Ravens and then by Ravens fans, it's like when he doesn't go out there and kill it, he's not getting, even getting an opportunity. It's like, oh, man, he's such a disappointment. But at the same time, it's like, whoa, he, he was a, a fifth or sixth round pick at wide receiver. So the expectations, they shouldn't have really even been that high. You obviously hope that these guys break out. You hope that these guys, they, they go off regardless of their draft status, but the expectation shouldn't have been too high. Isaiah Likely, oh, man, you know the Ravens, the way the Ravens propped him up. They, they had me fooled, too. I was thinking, like, oh, man, this dude, like, he, the way that they were using him in preseason and how involved he was in preseason, he was going, oh, I was like, oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, this dude, he, he going to have, like, at least, like, 600 yards, but six, seven touchdowns. That's what I thought he was going to do. But, yeah. Brandon Stevens. Um, I think that, that was more so Ravens propping him up because I remember in his rookie year, they used him a lot. He was out there with the starting defense. And Brandon Stevens has been tricky, man, because he had some good moments, but then he had some bad moments. He struggled from time to time. Sometimes he makes some big plays. Sometimes he, he just doesn't. Um, so it's been up and down with him. Uh, this season, I think it's been more downs than ups, but it's, it's, it's been tricky with him. Um, but the way that the Ravens, you could tell, like, he was one of those players, especially his rookie year, that the Ravens absolutely loved. They loved and adored this guy. Um, Jalen Armour Davis With him uh, I don't really think they propped him up like that um, And I don't really think fans did either Chris Moore Oh wow Oh he took it back Chris Moore um, Yeah They, they, they kind of sold you on a Chris Moore They tried to sell you on a Chris Moore story On his story with fourth round receiver um, and But he, he just never got it going as a receiver As a return man he was straight As a, as a kick returner um, and he did make some plays at wide receiver, but just not too many. Dalen Hayes. Oh, Dalen Hayes, that's that's a tricky one. Um, Dalen Hayes, we thought that he was gonna be this uh out of nowhere. What was he, a fifth round pick, I think, at pass rush? I forget what round he got picked in. But we thought that it was gonna end up being something and it just they end up in his second year. They waived I mean he got put on injury reserve his first year, then the second year they waived him with an injury settlement and that was it. So it's like, man, it is it's tough. And he said there are many more. Uh, now, he said, this is not to say those players aren't good, but banking your whole season on them, likely in Prochet, or the future of your franchise, letting Lamar walk for Huntley, is just setting everyone up to fail miserably. Oh, man. So, that's, again, pa powerful, powerful uh, question and comments right here. But anyway, he said, also, as a side note, the team keep it clean subscriber mentioned Brock Purdy, uh, the Niners backup, and that he was being unfairly elevated by the media while Huntley was being hated on. I love Snoop, and maybe I'm biased, but I went to high school with Purdy, and he's a much better player, and that will show in the next few weeks. I'm sorry, Ravens fans. I mean, you ain't got to apologize for how you feel about a player. I mean, you, it's, you ain't say nothing disrespectful or anything like that, but... So yeah, man. Hey, I, I appreciate that, and hey, it's it's, a, it's such a small world too. You went to high school with Brock Purdy with the NFL quarterback. That's what's up, man. But I appreciate it. I appreciate you bringing that to all of our attention and just giving us a reminder how, um, just yeah, players can be put in these really really tough positions, and then when the players are sort of underwhelming, then it's like, oh man, a lot of people be like, oh man, this guy's terrible. This guy's that and that. When maybe the expectation shouldn't have really been that high in the first place. Next question also came from a patron. Amari said, man, what do you think about our inside linebackers, PQ and Roe? They are going to be forced to keep PQ after this year because they play great together. What do you think we will do? Because I don't know about you, but I believe we have the best uh, inside linebacker duo in the league. From interceptions to the way they clean up after each other, insane and instinctive. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm still not sold that the Ravens will re-sign Patrick Queen too. Um, I would love if they could keep them together, but I just I think the business is going to get in the way because you got to re-sign uh, what Roquan Smith. 
Um, and that's going to be the big, big, big money deal. Uh, and with Patrick Queen, I mean, you think he's going to want to take less just to stay? He could. And, hey, that'd be, that'd be cool. But, I mean, he's going to want to get his money, man. And especially the way that he's been playing. If he can do this again, like, what I would hope. If, if they're not going to resign Patrick Queen. Like I said, I would love for them to. I would love for them to. But I just, I just don't see it. But if with Patrick Queen, if they're not going to resign him, I would love for Eric DaCosta to be like, you know what? All right, I'll just, I'll take the third round comp pick. I'll take the third round comp pick. And what I mean when I say that is if they were to let Patrick Queen let his contract expire so you can keep him for as long as you possibly can, um, whether you don't pick up the fifth year option, I would rather than pick up the fifth year option so you can keep these guys to, to, as, together as long as possible. Um, but if you could pick up the fifth year option, so you have him for that last year, uh, and then, uh, so that would, that means you would have him for two more years together. And then after that, uh, you could let him walk cause you got next year and then you would have the following year. Um, and then after that, you let him walk for that third round compensatory pick once he got signed by somebody else. Um, so you would keep that duo together as long as possible, especially if, again, if you, that's if you weren't planning on re-signing a Patrick Queen. Um, but yeah, I, I just, like you talked, you talked about instinctive, um, it's, it's been nice, man. And like we always say, Patrick Queen, he started playing a lot better before Roquan Smith got here. He started playing much better before Roquan Smith even got here, but then Roquan Smith got brought to the Ravens and it took Patrick Queen to a whole nother level. Um, these guys, they feed off of each other. They get jealous, uh, with each other. Um, Cause we saw Roquan Smith. He caught that pick and he turned into Roquan Reed. And Patrick Queen was looking like, oh, okay. All right. You just wait and see there, buddy. And then he ended up catching that pick. And his the pick that he caught was more beautiful than Roquan. He made it, he made it he made sure to make it more beautiful than the pick Roquan Smith caught. Now he ain't getting no yak because he caught that that diving backers interception, but it, it was nice, man. So um, it, it's just nice to see them feed off of each other. And I'm sure they uh, they have these internal competitions with each other. Oh, he made a play. You know what? Let me make a play now. Oh, I made a play. Watch him make a play now, too. And and that's a good thing uh, because it they can help build each other up as we've seen them do already. And the last question on this episode came from another patron, my guy, Dominic. He said, Engraven, just got my thoughts together after the game. And can I say it was a tough, grinded out game? Greg Roman, this game was better than last week for sure. I, I, now, the, the defense was different too now. The defense, but yeah, he, uh, there weren't, he ain't doing any like goofy plays. Um, there were some times like situationally where I questioned him, um, but they ended up overall getting the job done. So that was good to see. And it was a productive game, um, especially given the situation of that quarterback. Uh, he said, Greg Roman, this game was better than last week for sure. I think Stanford telling him he's not in the running now more made him. Uh, oh, I think Stanford telling him he's not in the running no more made him think I shouldn't have sabotaged us last week. Let me get right. Other than that, the run game looked great against the good Steelers defense. That is top 10 against the run. My question is, how much of an impact is it to have both? Gus and JK back, especially after seeing what we can do with them uh, when healthy at the same time. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's great, man. It's great. And, and JK, he's not even healthy yet. He ain't even healthy yet. He still, he still got a little, little ways to go. But um, it, it was really nice to see it, man, because they both made big impacts. Um, they were both situationally really good. JK for the long ball, Gus for the short grind it out type of stuff and then that that clutch third and third and five or third and six whatever it was to end the game it, it was nice to see man so they're gonna need both of them uh for the long haul um they're gonna need to use both of them for the long haul i mean we right down here it's like we only got a couple weeks left it's only a couple weeks left in the regular season then in the playoffs i mean we would assume that the ravens make the playoffs especially how they sitting right now um, they still got to do their job or whatnot, but you would assume that they're going to be there. But having J.K. and Gus both healthy uh, for what you hope is a nice long playoff run um, is, is, is something that's necessary. And both of them are very, very effective running backs um, and they can feed off of each other. And then you still got Drake and you still got Justice Hill, too. So it's very, very nice to have not only options, but quality options that you know can make plays for you. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Right and 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 right
Shout out to Engraving.